So now we can move towards this last thing. Now we know that there are many different types of antibodies. So to memorize the classes or types of antibodies, we have many mnemonics like we have this mnemonic game, but I created this particular mnemonic or the word because this particular mnemonic has a unique pattern and you will understand once you will complete this whole lecture. Now if we talk about Meiji now, we know that there are five different types of antibodies. In the beginning, I told you that antibodies also go by the name of immunoglobulins. So we have immunoglobulin M, then IgA, E, D, G, and so on. And if we talk about the name immunoglobulin, if we talk about immuno, immuno indicates that these things are directly related to the immune system. They are there to help or aid the immune system. And globulin means that they are protein that have globular structure. So their structure is globular. So globulin indicates their globular structure. And then this line. Now this line isn't making any sense right now, but soon it will make some sense. So let's move towards the first Ig or the antibody, which is IgM. Now this IgM has two kind of appearance, two kind of existence. Now this IgM can exist in two forms, either in the monomeric form, in this particular case it would be called as the IgM unit or IgM cell, but it can also exist in the form of a pentamer. If five such units combine with each other and they have this combining or joining point, this particular yellow portion is known as the J protein or we can also call it the J chain protein. Why? Because this J means joining. This is a joining protein that is joining different units of IgM and it's forming a pentamer. So five such units will combine with each other with the help of this J chain protein and they will form the IgM pentamer, right? And then if we talk about the next one, we have IgA. Now clearly you can see that two units combine with each other to form this dimer. Earlier we talked about the pentamer, now we are facing a dimer. And again we have the J protein, the joining chain protein that is letting them to join with each other, that is helping them to join with each other. Now we also have a unique structure here, this wave-like structure. I will talk about this particular thing in a moment, but right now we are just talking about structure, so I am not highlighting its function. We will talk about function in a moment. Now comes the next thing. Now we have this line. Multi-armed digger digs a single hole. Still, it isn't making any sense, but when I will talk about all the different kinds of antibodies, it will make a certain sense. Now comes the next three antibodies, D, G, and E. They have this one common aspect that they are all monomeric. They exist in the form of monomers. They have few structural differences, but apart from few structural differences, they are all same. They are same in one aspect that they exist in the form of monomer. Now, if we talk about this line now, multi-arm digger digs a single hole or multi-armed digger digs a single hole. So now you can make the sense. Now it's pretty obvious that multi-armed means that these two things, IgM and IgA, they prefer to exist in the form of polymers, either the dimer IgA or the pentamer IgM. So they are multi-armed. Just for the sake of simplicity, let's call them these things the arms. So it has two arms, it has five arms. So that's why I try to create this line multi-armed. So M and A, they are actually the multi-armed or they are actually the dimers and pentamer respectively. But digger digs a single hole. Digger has these three immunoglobins, IgD, then IgG and E. Single, let's focus on this particular word. They all exist in a single monomeric form. So that's why I created this line. So we can easily memorize these two things, M and A. They are multi armed or they exist in the form of polymer. While if we talk about the other three, they have a single unit. They exist in the form of single unit or monomer. I hope the structure is quite clear. Now we can move towards the one last thing. We have all the three IGs which are D, G and E. Okay, lastly, we can group them. As you can see on the right side of the screen, you can see IG, D, IG, E and IG, G. So if we specifically talk about IG, E, now it has an elongated structure. Earlier, I told you that there are some antibodies that 
also have the extra constant region if we specifically talk about their heavy chain they have this extra constant region so this particular ige antibody it has this extra constant region so that's why it is elongated why so because it has extra constant region in this form you can see this particular area but if we look at the next antibodies they don't really have this extra constant region and if we talk about the next one d now this igd we are just talking briefly about the function I will talk about their functionality in detail in the coming lectures but right now I am just giving the overview related to their functionality so if we talk about IgD it is deeply embedded in the B cells we know that there are T cells B cells they also go by the name of T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte but if we specifically talk about the B lymphocyte they have the surface antibodies on their outermost boundary they have the surface antibodies and the most common common surface antibody is actually IgD. So IgD is deeply embedded in B lymphocyte as B cell receptor or BCR. There they are known as at that particular region they are known as B cell receptors and then IgG, G, G for group, group of four. Now this particular antibody this particular antibody has four subclasses in the form of igg1 and then up until igg4 so there is igg2 igg3 and igg4 so they have the subclasses i will talk about their function in the coming lectures now comes igm m is most suited for complement fixation now in my earlier videos we covered this concept of complement cascade or the complement activation if we specifically talk about the classical pathway of the complement activation, we know that it requires the antigen antibody complex to get itself activated. So to initiate the whole process, there is this requirement of antigen and antibody union or complex. So for that particular purpose, IgM is the most suited antibody. Why so? Because, because its structure allows it to fix the complement in the best way possible. As compared to the IgG, this particular IgM is more suited for that particular job, right? Because it perfectly attaches the complement to its surface because of its pentameric structure, pentameric alignment. So next thing is that it is also possible. It's also possible that this particular IgM can exist in the form of monomer. And again, on the surface of B cell, it can exist as the B cell receptor. So along with this IgD, this particular IgM also has this ability to exist as BCR on the surface of B lymphocytes. And lastly, we can talk about the IgA, the dimer. We haven't talked about this wave-like thing there. Now this wave-like thing, we can say that this A antibody or IgA is armed with secretory component. This particular wave-like portion is known as secretory component. And, and this particular secretory component is there to protect this IgA. Now, when I will talk about function in detail in the coming lectures, their functionality in detail in the coming lectures, we will come across this function that this IgA is mostly found in the fluids like saliva, tears, even the breast milk. Now, when breast milk is transferred from mother to the offspring or the baby, different digestive enzymes acts on that particular milk, obviously, and in that particular stage, this secretory component will protect this IgA from different kind of digestive enzymes because we don't want these IgA to get themselves degraded. In that particular situation, to protect IgA, these secretory components comes into action and they protect IgA from degrading. So in very simple and plain words, it protects IgA from certain different digestive enzymes. So lastly, we can talk about one thing that if we try to divide the whole, if we try to divide all the different antibodies in two sections, on the right side of your screen, you can see the three antibodies, IgE, D, and G. They are separated because they exist in the form of monomers. While if we talk about the left side of the screen, you can only see IgM and IgA they exist in the form of polymers like the dimers and pentamers and so on so we can also divide the whole we can also divide all the different types of antibodies horizontally in this manner 
and you can see that at the bottom you can see IgA and IgG. Now I already talked about IgG that IgG has four subclasses. Similarly, this IgA also has two subclasses and one is related to the serum and other one is not related to the serum. So I will talk about the functionality of these two subclasses in the future lecture or in the coming lectures. But for the time being, you just need to memorize one thing that these two things, the IgG and IgA, they exist or they also they also have subclasses, right? So I hope this lecture was helpful in understanding the structure as well as the function. Thank you for listening and thank you for your patience.